Oh, hi. <laughs> How's it? Travis, it's good to be with you, yes. Thank you very much. Um, the Bible. Could you go through the structure of the Bible with us? Because obviously it's not one book. No, no, no. It's a very, very interesting book. And we have to, I think, start off with an understand that the Bible is not a collection of fables or stories that people long ago wrote, as some people try and pass it off as that. In fact, the Bible is unique because what was written down in here was written by men under the inspiration of the Spirit of God, and they wrote as God directed them. And in any other collection of writings, you can, you can get 10 different men writing on a subject, but they will all have there'll be contradictions and conflicts in all their writings. But in the Bible, even though we have men writing over a period of 1,200 years, we have um, three different languages, we have many different countries. When you put the books together, they fit like a hand in a glove. The theme throughout from Genesis to Revelation is all basically pointing to Jesus Christ, either prophetically or looking back or looking forward. They describe God's dealing with Israel. They do, there's, there is prophetic events spoken of in the Bible that's impossible for men to, to discuss or write down unless they were inspired by God. So we have to start off with realizing that this is God's word to us. It's, and when we have that attitude, we start to read it with different eyes. The Old Testament was really the dealing of God from Genesis when the time of the beginning the dealing of God with the Jewish people until the time of Jesus Christ. The New Covenant, which is the New Testament, is basically God's dealing with the church from the time that Christ came until the time that he will return. And it's what, why we call it the New Covenant. God made a blood covenant through Jesus Christ with mankind. When we come to Christ through that covenant, we become part of the church. So the New Testament is our it's God's word to the church today. It's relevant to our lives. The Old Testament is the history and the prophecies and the dealing of God with the people of Israel until the time that Jesus came. All right, Rich. The Bible, it's, it's a big book. It's big. And for young people, it can be quite daunting. Uh, usually, we take a book and we read it from cover to cover. What are your suggestions or what is your advice for us as young people when starting to read the Bible? Well, <clears throat> when I first became a Christian and I got my first Bible, I turned to the back and I read the book of Revelation and got terrified. <laughs> I ran to the pastor the next day and said, what does this mean? And he just laughed at me and said, that's you way out of your depth on this one, boy. Just settle down. And really, we, I, I would encourage new Christians to start with the first four books of the New Testament. Read Matthew and Mark and Luke. All those three guys speak of the life of Jesus and the journeys of Jesus and the miracles of Jesus from different perspectives. But you will see how they complement one another. The Gospel of John is a wonderful Gospel. But it deals more with the deity or the the God side of the life of Jesus it has huge insights into his relationship with the Father and the work of the Holy Spirit. So Matthew, Mark, Luke and John are very, very good books to start with. Then we can start to work our way through the New Testament. Acts and then we get into Paul's letters. Understanding that each letter was written to a church to help that church work through situations. The first part of Paul's letters sometimes contain a bit of doctrine, the last part are often on practical Christian living. I would start in the New Testament. If you want to go to the Old, which is a, and start to read it, you know, stay in the New Testament, but occasionally read, go back to the Old and read a chapter here and there, then books like Genesis and Exodus are good books to start with. If I would initially skip out things like Leviticus and Numbers and Deuteronomy. It's all the rules that God gave the people at Mount Sinai. You, unless you've got a little bit of knowledge, you'll get bogged down there. But the fun books of the Old Testament 
are Joshua and Judges and Samuel and, and Kings and Chronicles. These are the history of Israel and the wars and the kings and all the good things they did and the terrible things they did. And, and a lot of the prophets came along those times. So if, before you get to read and understand the prophets who come later, understand the kings, understand the time period, understand the history. Proverbs is a wonderful book. It's got, it's got 31 chapters. I often tell people to read a chapter a day. It's just practical things. Psalms is a lot of poetry. Psalms has a lot of prophecy in it as well. Where David looked forward and he saw the Messiah and things that are happening. But Psalms you take slowly. You know, there's a huge richness in Psalms. But I would always keep my feet in the Old Testament and then just become comfortable by going backwards and forwards. Just keep my feet in the New Testament rather. I think you become comfortable going backwards and forwards. Um, you mentioned right in the beginning that the Bible is not just a bunch of random stories. But if you read the Old Testament, sometimes living in a modern world, it's, and also under the New Covenant, it can be quite hard to, uh, to identify with different stories that happen along the way. And even reading the Bible, like the New Covenant, the parables and stuff like that, um, it can just seem like stories. But how, how do we see the relevance? How do we see what the Lord is trying to say to us as individuals for our Christian lives when we read the Bible and see what the Lord wants to say to us through the Bible? I think, Travis, the first thing we must understand is that when we got born again, God took His laws and He wrote them on our hearts. That is the miracle of the new birth. So that the, the moral impact of what was given to the people, the Jewish people at Mount Sinai, the Ten Commandments, all those rules, the moral impact of that is actually written upon the heart of a newborn Christian. And we have a capacity for spiritual things. We have a hunger for spiritual things. And we actually have a hunger and a capacity to start to understand the heart of God to us as reflected through the scriptures. So when we start to read, the Bible will actually resonate with our hearts. We will read it and the Holy Spirit takes scriptures and he makes them clear for us. We always read the Bible with the help of the Holy Spirit. The natural man does not understand spiritual things. For him they stay stories. But for us, the significance of those stories, is it becomes very clear as we read it, the Holy Spirit will illuminate them to our hearts. However, there is something that we need to do. And, and that is what is called biblical meditation. Now, biblical meditation is very different to the meditation described in transcendental meditation and Eastern religions, where you blank your mind out and you just think on, on, on one little phrase and repeat it. That's very, very dangerous. Biblical meditation is the opposite. It's the same as a cow chewing the cud. You know how a cow eats his grass and then he goes and finds a tree and then he brings it up and he chews it and he swallows it and he brings it up and he chews it. That's what the Hebrew idea of meditation was. And it's to take a, a, a scripture or a verse or a, a small passage and to think about it. What I do is I'll read it and then I will start to write out my thoughts on it. And then I'll write them out again. And then I'll write them out again, maybe a day later. A couple of days later, I'll look at that verse and I'll write them out again. What I'm doing is I'm taking that verse and I am chewing it over. I'm giving it all the attention of my heart, all the attention of my mind. And as I do that, the, the juice inside the verse, the, the revelation that God has, the significance of that verse suddenly becomes a reality within my heart. Once that's in your heart, you never lose it. The clarity is there, faith is there, the significance that is there, and that's how the Bible comes alive. 